we just saw the Battle of Alberta. Yeah. It, it was entertaining. It was wild at times, but it was it was very quick, and, mm. and it ended on a controversial play that you know we talked through and through and broke it down. Mm. And, and you know the Blake Coleman kick. You guys talked about it on Hockey Night, and it was a great TV. It, mm -hmm. it was sensational. I know a lot of people feel that way, but let's just get your quick opinion. And for those that didn't get to see it last night, just what is your take on this? Well, I think it was a goal. Uh, I I didn't. I didn't think it was enough of a distinct kicking motion to overturn. You know, either way they were going to get an argument. I think the, the outcry has shown that no matter what they did, people were going to be pissed off at them. And the reason I, the reason I think that should be a goal is, as I said last night, with goaltender interference, if you get ridden in by the defenseman or you get pushed into contacting with the goaltender, you get the benefit of the doubt, right? You know, you got pushed in. Therefore, it's a good goal. If you look at that, he collides with Smith uh, with uh, with Smith's pad, and also he falls in. Cece's falling into him. Now, I will say this: the two elite level athletes on the panel, and I'm not talking about me and anyone. I'm talking about <laughs> Kevin and Jennifer. Said that you can do that. Like what Coleman did, you can do. But I see his right leg pushed back because it's on the pad and his left leg trying to prevent himself from going into the post. To me, he's trying to stay on his feet and not kill himself as much as he's trying to put the puck into the net. And then you guys showed all those other examples. Uh, Nate Thompson, uh, Chris Tierney, uh, the Chandler Stevenson one, I guess, has been going around today, which look a lot more like goals than that one did. Look. Edmonton won the series. Edmonton, full marks, they won the series. I just didn't like the fact the goal got disallowed. This will be debated for years. Mm -hmm. Me and Jesse talked about it. This is going to be something that Calgary Flames fans sit in 10 years and discuss and debate and what could have been. But let's, let's advance the story forward, at least when it comes to the rule. Yeah. Is this enough backlash, enough talk, enough under-the-microscope type of situation that the NHL is going to look at it and tweak it or think about it? Does this at all maybe change the rule it's possible I think there's enough debate today that you're at the very least going to have a conversation about it here's the thing like there are people out there who say oh you should be able to kick a puck and score no problem I think that's crazy like if, if you remember Clint Malarchuk uh, you know why you don't allow that and the other thing too and I was talking about this with Merrick who's got young kids who play the way kids sharpen their skates now they're sharpening them even to uh, uh, like a more honed edge than even before. You do not want that. You don't want that. And there are people in the league against that, and I completely support them on that. I've always been a big believer on, like, you know, leave the ice or not leave the ice. If you keep your skate on the ice and you direct it, to me that should be a goal. The moment your skate comes off the ice, I don't think it should be a goal. I've seen Jeff Merrick skate. I played hockey against him. He is not getting his skate sharpened <laughs> like his kids. I don't I know. Hope, I hope he's watching right now. I think he's dropping them on the cement on the way to get his kids skate sharpened. I'm sorry, Jeff. That's he's not even here to defend himself. He's got a blacksmith doing it for him. Yeah. <laughs> let's let's talk Connor McDavid, and we know what he does on the ice. It's sensational. We could talk about it for hours, and there's enough there just to go into every single example yeah. of him doing things that we've never seen hockey players do in years, maybe ever. But there's a couple moments I want to ask you about. And, you know, for me, it stood out. We talked about it before. I'm going to interrupt you for yes. one second. This. This is what stood out to me, the celebration. That's where I was going. Yeah. Like, either we're in sync here, or you're just trying to steal my job. Here. Like, it's <laughs> I one just or the wanted other to here. hit the, like, a good director's, like, you got to talk about it when it happens. You were just right? sick of hearing me talk. You're like, shut <laughs> up and let me get to my point. Let, this is... Sean and friends, not Elliot and friends, not Frege and friends. It would be Elliot and friend. <laughs> and not, not, not me. <laughs> it ain't going to be me anymore. Um, this moment and the interview with Scott Oak, if you allowed me to get there, I would have mentioned it. The <laughs> smile that he had, even before Scott delivered the question, mm -hmm. how great is it for hockey to see Connor McDavid having this much fun? I think it's huge. I, like, like, this is the standard bearer of the sport, right? And, and you need that. 
Um, you know, Michael Jordan, it took a long time for him to win, but it, I, it was his first or second playoff when he had 63 points against the Celtics, and we were kind of made aware of, you know, what we were dealing with there, right? You need your best players, even if they don't win, to have big playoff moments. It's, it's taken a lot longer than Connor McDavid would like, but that was important. It's important for everyone to see. And, you know, the thing about McDavid is he hates to lose so much, which is one of the things I really love about him. That he really wears it when they lose, and they've done, and they've had so much disappointment that unfortunately you think of a lot of you know the scowl that's been on his face from time to time because not that I blame him, I want to win, and he wants to win, and so I thought that was huge last night. You know, I I know that uh, St. Louis is going to be a tough out for Colorado, but I guarantee you that there are a lot of people around the league right now saying, okay, we need McKinnon and McDavid, and. You know, it's, if it was David Stern in the 80s, you know, he'd send out his three referees that he controlled like a marionette and said, <laughs> make sure that uh, it's Magic Larry in the finals. So I'm just going to cross off my next question here because it was, how excited are you to see a potential McKinnon, McDavid? Well, uh, but you, you just keep stealing the show. <laughs> you you got you to gotta earn it, right? Like, you, you know, you have to beat those guys. But I think everybody wants to see it. You know, maybe the Blues ruin the party. It's certainly possible. They're a hell of a team. But I think everybody wants to see McKinnon McDavid. And, uh, you know, people like to see stars, right? And they like to see stars on the biggest stage. And, you know, I'll tell you this. Like, I know I'm, I'm really getting ahead of myself now. I, I think Tampa's going to be the favorite against whoever they play in the Eastern Conference Final. I want to see either McDavid or McKinnon against... Vasilevsky and the Lightning. I, I really do. Are, are you shocked what you saw from Tampa? The, the Tampa you saw against the Panthers, was it different than the Lightning you saw against the Leafs at all? Or was it just two different matchups, two different teams? I, I think that, uh, I, I think for whatever reason, it took Tampa longer to find their footing against Toronto than we expected. And I think once they got there, we were reminded that not only are they good, but they're, they're smart. Like, you know the person in school that is the best athlete and is also the best student and also the most committed? Yeah, you, sure. The, the <laughs> most committed at what they I, do. I wasn't pointing at myself. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's like you hate them, right? They're either the, they're the, they're like the most successful person in the class and they're, and they're good at everything. And you're like, I, I hate that person. Like, like these guys, I look at them. Like that game two against Tampa when, like, you know, Hagel's getting carried off and Stamkos is coming back. Like, that says to me that's not only a great team, but it's, a, it's full of a bunch of people who understand the commitment of winning. And that's what separates them from everybody else. Are you shocked that without Braden Point, we talk so much yes. about the fatigue of a team that goes deep, not only for one Stanley Cup, but two runs, and you throw into the fact they were in a bubble, it was COVID, it was strange seasons. Are you shocked that they are having the output that they are and not really seeing much of a drop? Because I think there was moments in that Toronto series where people said, they're done. You know, they've played too much hockey, the least will just kind of pick it up and, and, and take it from here. Are you shocked that they're just chugging along I was shocked they swept them at a point absolutely I never saw that coming like I don't pick against Tampa I, I picked them in every series ever since they won the cup I the first time I picked them in every series they play and not because I'm really smart or have any <laughs> kind of knowledge it's just because I think they have the human eraser who's on the screen right now and they understand the real commitment to winning and that's and they've shown it in every series like this, this night this is the pack like Perry hitting himself in the face, and then I think we're going to see Sergachev. This is Sergachev getting hit in the face by the puck. Oh, that's Cernak. And then comes Sergachev, and there's Stamkos blocking the shots. And he goes to the room, and he'll come back, and, and then he'll come back another time. Yeah, there's Cernak getting hit, and I guess they clean the blood off his shirt because his BX <laughs> says they don't like blood on the shirts. Here's Stamkos blocking another shot. There's where he left, and here comes Hagel's going to block the shot here. And, and like, that's like, you know, that's like the famous story about the Islanders and the Oilers, right? The Oilers winning the cup and, and, and not, or the Islanders, Oilers losing for the fourth, the Islanders' fourth cup and the Islanders not even celebrating because they've all got ice bags on. Like, the Islanders won 19 series in a row. Tampa's won 10. I never thought we'd see a situation again where a team won 10 straight playoff series.